What's up everyone, Tech Mindset here. On this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Windows 10 onto your computer. So from how to download the ISO, making a bootable flash drive, and then installing it onto your computer, I'm gonna show you every step of the way. First things first, we need to find the media creation tool for Windows. Now I've done this here just by creating a basic Google search for Windows 10 ISO, and that took me to the Microsoft site and the Google search here, it currently says, download Windows 10 disk image file. And when you click on that, it opens this page, download Windows 10. And right here you see, create Windows 10 installation media. So you click download, and that downloads the media creation tool. Now I've already downloaded this. So I have the media creation tool right here. And I also have Rufus in this folder. And if you don't know what Rufus is, check out my video of how to install Ubuntu on your computer, and I talk a little bit more about Rufus and where to get it. Obviously scan it first with your antivirus before you run anything. So first thing you want to do is double click on the media creation tool. Uh, also, you might not be seeing the screen right now. It's a security prompt on Windows, uh, but it's just the user account control. Do you want to allow this app to make changes on your device? Go ahead and click yes. So first we're gonna click accept. Okay, so typically they use this tool to upgrade your current computer, but what I'm gonna do is click on create installation media, USB flash drive, DVD, ISO file for another PC. I'm gonna click next. Now this tool can create a bootable flash drive and you can definitely do that, but what I'm gonna do here is download the ISO file and then at a later time, you'd be able to make this bootable flash drive. So I'm gonna leave the recommended settings selected. It already knows I have a 64-bit system, so Windows 10, 64-bit. Next. So what this screen does is you're going to select what you wanna do. So USB flash drive, if you leave that selected and go through this process, what it will do is it'll take a flash drive that you select, wipe it, and then make that into a Windows 10 bootable flash drive. When you select ISO file, you're going to download the image file of Windows 10, and then you can later burn that to a DVD, or you could use another piece of software such as Rufus to make a bootable flash drive from that. So for the purpose of this tutorial, and in case my flash drive ever gets damaged, I can always make a new flash drive. I'm gonna go ahead and download the ISO file. So I'm gonna select ISO file and then click next. So now a window will come up and ask you, where do you wanna save the file? I already have my location selected, and it just says Windows ISO. Uh, just for my sake here, I'm going to just rename it and add Windows 10 64-bit to the file name just so I know what it is later. And then I'm gonna click Save. And now the Windows 10 tool is going to go through and download this file. The speed will obviously depend on your internet speed. I have a pretty decent speed, so it shouldn't take too long for me. It will then verify it and create the file. Okay, and when it's done, so from this screen, it tells you where the ISO file is. And if you want, you can click open DVD burner. If you have a DVD burner attached to your computer and a blank DVD, and you can make a DVD install disk of Windows 10. We're not gonna do that in this case. I'm just gonna go ahead and click finish. Great. So now in my folder, Windows 10 64bit.iso, there's our file. In this folder, I have the portable version of Rufus. I'm gonna go ahead and double click it. You might not see the screen. It's, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? I'm gonna click yes. All right, uh, I'm not gonna allow it to find updates. Okay, this screen gives you all the options of Rufus and should look the same as the how to install Ubuntu video. In fact, you can see that the device is currently the same flash drive I used from the Ubuntu video. So we're gonna leave that as it is. We're gonna go ahead and erase this flash drive as part of this process. Now where it says boot selection, disk or ISO image, please select. I'm gonna click on the select button right here. And then I'm gonna to navigate to the folder that I have the Windows ISO in. So from the folder I have the Windows 10 ISO in, I'm gonna click it and then click open. Great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave the settings here as they are. Uh, as you can see, standard Windows installation is on here. The partition scheme is GPT. If you have an older system, you might need to change GPT to MBR, but uh, just in the scenario that this is a brand new computer or I have a newer computer and I'm reinstalling Windows on it, I'm just going to leave this as GPT. Everything else is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And it's gonna remind me that the flash drive I have plugged in is going to be erased. 
I'm gonna click OK. And now we let Rufus do its thing. We'll come back when this process is done. Okay, with Rufus finished, we're gonna go ahead and click close. And as you can see on the flash drive here, this is what a Windows flash drive would look like. All right, I'm gonna see you in the next part when it comes to the installation of Windows. Similar to the Ubuntu video, you're going to want to make sure that you know whatever your hotkey is to be able to boot to your flash drive upon boot of the computer. Similar to the Ubuntu video, this is a bootable flash drive, which means you need to make sure it's plugged into your computer when you turn it on. And you're going to need to either make sure that your computer will boot to it automatically, or you need to know what your hotkey is for your computer to be able to boot to it. And if you look at the computer screen when you turn it on, it may briefly tell you, push this key for the boot menu. That's what you need. If you need any help with this, go to techmindset.io and book a consultation and I'll get you sorted. When we boot from the flash drive, we should see a screen like this. Okay, so from this screen, we're gonna go ahead and click next. Install now. And again, this scenario is we are installing on a fresh drive. So you're going to want to be careful if you have information already on your drive, or if you're repairing your installation, you would need to take a different approach. But I'm taking this from the perspective that we are wiping this drive and we are installing Windows 10 on it. So in this situation, I currently don't have a product key. I have one that I can add, that I can add later. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click, I don't have a product key. In this example, I'm gonna do this based on purchasing a Windows 10 home product key. So I'm gonna leave home selected and then click next. So next you have to check the box and then click next. Now, in this case, I'm gonna click custom. We have our drive here and then I'm gonna click new. It's gonna make a partition of the full drive space. I'm gonna click apply. And then to make sure everything works right, it's gonna make additional partitions. That's okay, click okay. Okay, now we have our partition. I'm gonna go ahead and format this partition. So I'm gonna click okay. Now we have our partition, I'm gonna click next. And now we're installing Windows on that partition. It may restart several times during the installation process. I'm just not going to touch anything and just let it do its thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and mute that. Um, you can leave that up if you want. Uh, I personally don't care about using Cortana. I don't think I've ever used Cortana. Uh, to be honest. So just let it do its thing here. We should get to the next screen shortly. All right, so I'm gonna leave United States selected and then click yes. Keyboard layout, US, yes. I'm gonna click skip on a second keyboard layout. If you need those things or you need to adjust them, you can go ahead and do it. I'm just installing this as if it were me. Now it's going to ask you about connecting to the internet. So something important here is that I've actually disconnected this from the internet. If you like to use and connect your Microsoft account, that's totally fine. Uh, for me personally, I prefer to use my computer as just a local machine uh, and not have everything connected all the time, but that's just me. So for right now, I don't have an internet connection so that it doesn't do that. So I'm just going to click, I don't have internet. And you can leave it open if you want. Uh, I'm gonna continue with limited setup. Something with Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 10, and now Windows 11. They're increasingly tying in the Microsoft account in more with the operating system, uh, kind of like Apple and mobile devices. Uh, I personally am not the biggest fan of that for my personal computer, but you know, you do you. So I'm gonna click continue with limited setup. Enter your username, click next. As far as the password goes, uh, enter that here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click next to not have a password just for this example. So the next important screen here is the privacy settings. You might find that some of these may need to be turned on or other areas in the privacy settings may need to be turned on after you've finished installing. But for me personally, again, I'm gonna turn off all these. You might want them for certain things, you might need them for certain things, but in my situation here, I'm just not going to leave them on. And click accept. Uh, let Cortana help you get things done. I'm going to click not now. 
All right, now it's gonna finish up the installation process. Again, it might restart, just let it do its thing. And you also might be staring at this screen for a little while, that Windows is getting everything ready for you. It might take a little bit, just give it some time. Okay, so now we have Windows 10 installed. Again, with Windows, they like to push their stuff, so Microsoft Edge is right up here. I'm gonna click maybe later to not let that show. So the resolution's a little strange for me right now because I'm installing this on a VM for this video, but if you're installing this on your computer or a laptop, you might see that your resolution will be filling up your full screen, but it might be a lower resolution. So if you wanna change that to be your monitor's native resolution, you just right click on the desktop, click display settings, and then under display here, we're gonna scroll down to where it says change resolution. And it doesn't look like it gives me all the options here, but I'm just gonna click the biggest one I can get. There we go. So now it fills up my screen better, even though I have a larger monitor, at least this gets me to see this a little bit better. So that's how you change the resolution. Okay, so if you remember earlier on, I had actually disconnected my VM from the internet. So if you had done that as well, it is now time to reconnect internet to your computer. So that way Windows will start pulling in updates and pulling in drivers. And that way everything will start functioning appropriately. Cause right now I don't have internet, so I can't really do much with this yet. And so finally, now that everything's installed and you want to enter your product key, you come over to the start button, go to the settings gear, and you just type in activate and then just go to activation settings. And this is the screen where you want to do that. So once you have an internet connection, it should ask you about activating windows. So when you're ready to enter the product key, just come to this screen, click change product key and enter your product key here and everything should then kick on. And then you should be set. You might see that before you enter your product key, you might have some limitations on certain customization settings. Or if you had your product key from the very beginning, you can go ahead and enter that during the installation process. Either way, it's up to you. This video is just about getting you through the installation process. And that's how you install Windows 10. So if you're struggling with your computer and you need help on something, go to techmindset.io and book a consultation and I'll get you sorted out. All right, see you in the next one.